Now back to Let's Chat with Tita Gracie, only here on V81 Radio. Friends, we're back with Let's Chat with Tita Gracie. And this afternoon, we have three very articulate guests. And uh, in our second segment, we'd like to delve deeper into news, information, and our audiences. In the first segment, we ended with the idea of uh, what is fake news? How do we discern real news from fake news? And that points to the fact that it is very important now to have integrity in media. And with that, I would like to uh, call back Bill Velasco because he presented some very interesting insights about uh, the need for audiences to discern what is real, what is fake, and how to differentiate that. And you have some some uh, very interesting visuals. And uh, just cue the tech, but please, Bill, take the floor. All right. Uh, I think uh, the decentralization of information is both uh, very refreshing and at the same time uh, very dangerous. It's refreshing in the sense that there's a lot of creativity, uh, you get more penetration, more access, you know, you get deeper into communities because now people can speak up when they see uh, injustice, when they see corruption, they report crimes, uh, they report the needs of their communities. But at the same time, uh, the, the standards are not the same. So what do you tell people whenever they are alarmed by something? First of all, you have to ask them, uh, where did this news come from? Uh, what's the, the person's agenda in, let's say, spreading that news or posting it on social media uh the other the other thing is what what is your reaction to it why would you want to pass it on why would you want to spread that news uh i think the, these are the questions that people are not used to asking themselves uh before they you know click something to to watch it again or share it with uh, whoever you know there's a, a lot of us really are in the vernacular ksp no? and uh, social media has given a soapbox to everybody even though they don't really need it or don't deserve it so for me the what i tell people generally is find out find out corroborate the source of the information when was it posted for all you know it could have been something three years ago in another country and it was just you know falsely uh you know posted as if it were from our country so these are the things that you have to look out for i mentioned earlier the responsibility now is a lot on the viewer you know uh, it is so easy to mislead a lot of people it is so easy to cause panic it is much more difficult to really struggle and learn this craft because it is a craft you know it is something that uh, some of us have taught ourselves over the span of how many years it is something that we take very seriously it is something that we want to use for the betterment of people you know, not to so panic or discord and then not to make people wonder or be uncertain about their future so i think uh, now what we have to do as media practitioners as those who know the rules of the game to spread and to disseminate the rules you know this is how you handle it this is how you put a story out there because uh, even within our own field you know, it's hard because there are people who are, you know let's be frank don't function with the same rules that we do um, many years ago i got into an argument uh, with a with a blogger, and I said, you know, he doesn't answer to anybody, and this person attacked me, and as a result, uh, the person got fired from the from the website that uh, he was blogging on. So, you know, there have to be rules, and we have to be the the thought leaders to institute the rules with everybody, so that you know we're all functioning from the same standard. You talked about integrity. You talk about professionalism. Those are the standards that we really have to follow. Yes, um, and Bill, one of the interesting developments of uh, media is the fact that given the technology that's on everybody's palm, your cell phone or your laptop, you know, everybody's in front of a screen with the capability of broadcasting, whether it's on social media, over the internet or even patching it up with the uh, mainstream media so with that power in the people's hands uh, that's a tremendous difference before it was just with the major companies that could broadcast yes. but now everybody with a cell phone can broadcast anything that they want 
And uh, there are advantages because of the speed, especially during the time of disaster. Like when Taal Volcano erupted, within minutes, people yes. were relying on social media to get their information. And the same goes for this pandemic, uh, which I think solidifies the new normal in terms of disseminating information. But aside from that, okay, we do know that uh, the propagandists, those people that want to have their own agendas communicated are out there. So for the audiences, what is your advice on how to discern what is real information substantiated by the experts or the government versus the ones propagated by these so-called propagandists? Okay, uh, first of all, uh, one of the major things I, I look for is uh, the institutional background. Okay, where is where is this news coming from? Is it coming from, let's say, the BBC? Uh, is it coming from a, a major uh, net European network? Because, to be honest, a lot of the American networks have lost their credibility because they, they put less and less reporters out into the field and more and more so-called experts in the studio. So they don't really have the same first-hand access that they used to. They're, they're dealing more with people giving their opinion than those who are actually there where the, where the action is. Now, that's an advantage we have here in the Philippines because, for example, uh, in the United States, if you have somebody who says he's a White House correspondent, he has 30 people working for him. So all he has to do basically is show up, sit down, and, you know, uh, and uh, do the interview. Here, you have a cameraman, you have a reporter, you have a driver. That's about it. And also, everybody's multitasking. And uh, that gives us a lot of flexibility. Now, these are the skills that we also have to pass on. Uh, I remember the 2016 U.S. election. A reporter was demonstrating how she covered the election using two phones and uh, one halo light. And that was, that was it. One phone was used as a camera to transmit her reports. And the other, the other phone was being used to receive instructions. So, you know, th th these are the things that we have to impart onto people also or else the quality will never improve and uh, as you're seeing on your screens now these are the responses of those people who are either closed-minded who, who just want to be on the negative side or who have their own agenda okay they they react to everything and they lump people together they call names they don't really think about how to separate how to discern uh what this person is saying is true. No, they just blackball everybody and say, if you're against me, all of you, you're wrong forever, period. So these are the, the things that uh, that we, we want to avoid. You know, as uh, broadcast professionals, one, we don't call people names. Uh, two, we find out. If somebody surprises us, let's say, with an opinion or observation that we didn't expect from them, uh, we have to find out where it's coming from. And also... One thing that's very dangerous, there's dangerous. generally no attribution given to you know, an, an item. For example, uh, somebody posted something on social media. Where did it come from? Uh, if there are any updates on the number of those who are infected, or those who died, those who recovered, where did it come from? Is it directly from the Department of Health? Is it somebody who just wants attention? Is it somebody who's trying to get people to panic? These are the these are the things that we have to to look at. What happens is a lot of people just see something, they react to it, and pass it on. So you're really yeah. creating negative ripples. Um, actually, I, I thank you for this list because I think people nowadays have to be guided. And uh, as earlier mentioned by Boyet, Season, uh, he said. People should not just listen to the person next door or yung ka Facebook natin or someone who is very opinionated and who's yes. actively posting all the time. So uh, I'm going to segue over to Boyat now because um, being experienced on radio, and he's, he's a radio guy, you're a print guy. And print, more or less, pag nandiyan na sa newspaper yan, it's very credible eh, because dumaan na yan sa editor, it's, you know, True. you've reviewed it. It's, it's a credible basis for getting information. But as we know, during this lockdown period, and even the years coming towards this time of uh, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, 
lesser and lesser people are relying on actual newspapers. They may be accessing your news online, but now because of the speed that they want the information almost instantaneously, you know, the, the, the ones that are now uh, uh, giving the quick turnaround for news would be people in your social media circle. So these are the guys that, that um, that's where the danger lies. Because like I said earlier, everybody's now a, a information disseminator. Everybody's a communicator. So Boyet, I think we're go I'm going to go back to you now with your statement earlier about um, being careful where you gather your news. Not everybody is credible. Would you like to uh, continue you know, that? Uh Let's look at the, the, the dynamic or the, the landscape of how people want to get their news and how they understand their news. Let's look at the social classes. Uh, for people who are educated, of course, they, it will be easier for them to uh, vet the information uh, because they know how to vet the information. For people in the lower classes of society, it's harder to vet their, 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 their information because the, the, the capacity to vet or their patience to vet that information or the tools for them to vet that information is not readily available with them or yes. they don't have the capacity to actually vet that information already. So what happens? As I've said a while ago, ayan na si Tita, ayan na si Kapitbahay, ayan na si Facebook na binabasa, and they take it as a spot. So what happens? It gets passed around. Once it gets passed around, it multiplies and multiplies and multiplies and then maya maya all hell breaks loose and we now have a piece a news item that is not even fact and people start reacting to it they 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 they, they actually are acting on something which might not be true at all and then the process of having to react to it the the the, uh, the agencies or the people that are in authority to react to it have to again now deny waste their energies to deny all of this again and which again just keeps on go the cycle just keeps on going around and we are wasting time instead of actually trying to inform the people so where does that now leave us it's it's a very hard problem uh that is born out of the incessant need for that information to be instantaneous but such is technology it has presented itself without the uh, the proper education for usage so nagyayari eh sige consume lang ng consume hindi naman naiintindihan so yun ang nangyayari ngayon oh, and, by, and uh, at the same time, time sure the, the, that is where a lot of fear mongering happens yes 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 and the fear mongering and the fear mongering is basically because of ignorance because they yes. are not sure of what they are consuming they are not sure right. of what they're hearing but then again they don't know how to vet the information are they still going to listen and watch traditional media if they have already been burned or they think they've been burned or their biases do not permit them to believe the digital media where does that leave them so it goes back yes. again to what they trust Go ahead. yes um and and you you uh mentioned a very important aspect of communications trust news and information at this time of a pandemic though the more credible trusted information sources should remain to be that because if you don't, for, for lack of, uh, you know, uh, not everybody has access to, um, to uh, let's say, uh, unlike you guys, you have access to uh, the, the ones that feed news, the news um, information bureaus, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, regular audience relies on people like you who go on air and deliver the news and information and uh, although there is a time lag, you are given the luxury of verifying your sources and making sure that what you deliver is true and real and reliable. But that will always depend on what social class, what economic bracket you're talking about. As I've said, for the higher, uh, for the educated minority, they will vet it. They will at the very least find out 
they will try to verify. But as you go down the economic ladder, they do not have the patience or sadly, the capacity to research, to, to know how to vet information because it's either they're not used to it, that is not, that that's not their normal to vet. They just take the word of, of, let's say, somebody that they're close to on Facebook, somebody that they, they talk to or they interact with every day that they trust. So that yes. really muddles up the that muddles up the landscape. And that is very crucial at a time like this, because uh, currently there is some uh, there are some issues in several sectors of our society uh, as to the procedure, for instance, the process for getting the social amelioration package that's being delivered by the government, and uh, if you notice in the mainstream media right now, and we have very few options, uh, we, we now see daily news feeds from Department of Health, daily news feeds from uh, the Philippine Information Agency, precisely to address that, that there is, that whenever there's process involved, especially now everybody wants to know, kailan lalabas yung uh, 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 financial assistance? When will they get their food packages? From their barangays no so information there are some cities that are very good at disseminating information to their constituencies but for the greater majority uh people are at a loss and some of them may have a tv or a radio uh, or maybe and, and a lot of them have um, social media uh i think there are more people now with handheld devices than television so um that brings me to what you said about as you go down the socioeconomic scale, there's what what is fed to them is taken as truth, right, Boyet? Hello, Boyet, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. Uh, let 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 me. Are you are you getting me? Are you getting me? Yes. Okay. Let me uh, let me also uh, put on the table how agencies, local governments, have now scrambled to be adept at communicating. Uh, yes. They have now become, uh, no, not, not, not that they have become, they are trying desperately to be very, very factual, to be very careful as to how they communicate to their constituents, as to how they are viewed on a national level, simply because understanding what their policies and their ordinances, their commands, what has to be done in the respective locales is very important. Uh, this has not been done. This has not happened in, in recent decades. And yeah. now that there is a pandemic. Now there is no, uh, the threat is unseen. The threat is uh, omnipresent. So for them, it, it's learning as you go. And that is very difficult. More so yes. if the head of your agencies are not adept to communicating. If your communication platforms are not set, if all you know to do is talk to the to talk to the people in the palenque, to talk to the people, the tricycle drivers, then you are in trouble because you do not know what platforms, what plans, how to execute certain objectives that you want to put forth in your localities to be able to effectively communicate your orders, to communicate your your. Uh, your, your commands to the citizenry of your localities to be able to reassure and calm your uh, your citizens. The moment that, let's say, for example, a mayor is not heard from, everybody starts questioning, where is the mayor? She's not doing anything. Yes. He or she's not doing anything. What are they doing? I'm not getting yes. my new goods. What are you doing? Yes. And in this age of technology, it is at their hands, it's at their fingertips to be able to communicate with the citizenry as easily and as clearly as they can. But the question is, do they know how to? Right. And uh, in terms of adeptness, uh, in terms of managing the reputation through their communications, we do know and we are aware that there are certain local government officials, and I'm not going to name names right now, who have <laughs> become adept since they w came into office. No? Uh, and we know that uh, they have developed a large following 
uh, over social media. And that has become an ace and they have become ahead of the pack in terms of communicating to their constituencies. I'm going to bring up Bill right now uh, because um, he, this is, this is now going to be part of our lesson as communicators. And I do know, Bill, that you uh, um, provide uh, a training for communicators, right? So this becomes crucial because um, our users of the right of the communication tools now are very broad. We have people in both the private and the public sector that are now um, fast tracking their, their, their skills and their knowledge and their um, ability to use uh, social media. So I'd like to call on uh, Bill right now because I need your, your insight on this. Uh, all of a sudden, they're all students of media. All of a sudden, people in the local government need to be adept at communicating their uh, their uh, ordinances, their new rules, because the game has changed. They don't anymore rely on the traditional forms of disseminating their information. So what do you think about that? Well, f uh, for one, there is a gap between uh, the way the government communicates to the people and the way the uh, media entities do. You know, for example, the major television and uh, radio networks. Uh, in other countries, they have an emergency broadcast service which cuts across everything whenever the government needs to communicate something. So in other words, it, it's, a, it's, it's a roadblock. No? It, it cuts through all TV stations. It interrupts everything. TV, radio, and uh, even on uh, social media and even on the internet. So we don't have that. So what happens is the, the local government officials, those who are smart enough, use social media or uh, they ask to be interviewed on traditional media. So that's, that's to their advantage. Uh, secondly, we need to train them how to communicate better, use of language. Now, uh, since the early 1990s, for example, there's been a, a subtle decline in the use of uh, English uh, here in the Philippines. You know? and, and you see this starting to pop up even in, in other media around the world. So that's another thing we have to address. One is the infrastructure has to be put in place. There are no uh, community or local uh, radio and TV stations, for example, in Metro Manila. How, how many are there? In the provinces, you have them. You have cable channels that only cover a certain geographical area of, let's say, Central Luzon, Northern Luzon, uh, in, in parts of the Visayas. You have uh, TV stations that only broadcast, let's say, in that particular city and neighboring cities. We do not have that in Metro Manila. And I think that's a big disadvantage because all the major decision makers are here. All the advertisers are here. So the money goes straight up to all the national networks. So that has sort of killed the uh, community communications in Metro Manila. And that's something I think we need to reestablish. If you're let's yes. say, a citizen of Quezon City, uh, how do you get information about what the local government is doing? You have to wait just in case yes. they, they call uh, the radio station and ask to be able to make an announcement. Uh, yes. Even, for example, uh, uh, RTVM, you know, Radio TV Malacanang. Uh, well, one channel force ratings are, are reading not so good so no. people are used to not watching it not like yes. other countries for example the bbc it has a yes. very very healthy audience so that's that's to their advantage so these are the things that i think we need to address uh, yes do we for example the uh, globe and smart can send all their subscribers messages and now luckily they're helping send messages from the national telecommunications commission from the department of health and so on and so forth but the government also has to have something like that so that True. you can communicate to everybody at any time. Yes, uh, you and that what you said really points to the gap. There is definitely now a tremendous gap between the national and the grassroots dissemination yes. of information. And in times like this disaster or crisis period, it becomes imperative for a bridge, for a bridge to cover those gaps and like it or not social media has become that bridge because everybody has their mobile phones and they're online 24 7. so managing the digital communication platform is now very very important and you, know, you and i know that before in 
universities, and I don't know how far the academe has caught up in terms of training our communicators, um, I, as a com arts uh, student, we were uh, uh, very well versed in production for mainstream media, but for the digital discipline, for social media management, it now is going to be, if not going to take over some aspects of mainstream media, primarily because it's delivered to every person directly. And that is powerful. You don't anymore have that time lag. You can you can share information whether uh, to a specific geographic area or globally, should you wish to, in a flash because of the technology. Um, later on, we're going to go into the technology issue. But now, let's cross to the other side. Let's take a look at the audiences and how they are now responding. And I'd like to call on Boots because um, this is going to be your realm, reading audience, reading the audience, reading the market, and um, how they are responding or reacting to this pandemic. So Boots, my question to you is, normal in terms of communication. How are the audiences coping? How are they reacting to whatever is going on? And with the new media, with the digital uh, technology, what is your reading in to the mind of our audiences? Uh, actually, Gracie, with the advent of technology, the information playing field was leveled. So now everybody is a critic. Everybody who knows Photoshop is an art director. Everybody who, know, who has Microsoft Word can be a writer or thinks himself a writer. Everything has been democratized. You can write anything. You can feature anything, post anything. But what's valuable to us as marketers is there is such a thing, there is a strat that we call social media listening. It's not just monitoring, huh? Because monitoring is what they're saying. But social media listening is finding out the root of you know the reason why they're saying such things on social media and that's actually very important because then you capture nuances you look out for meaning behind words or you look for the you know what's the what's, what's the what's the general uh, conception the general feeling of people it's it's your pulse it's your deep stick so even if Google is so accessible. It's also very sad that even if we have equal access to the internet, all things being constant, if we all have equal access to information, if we can all be as vigilant, if we can all Google the same things and we can be all as discerning as the next guy, then we will be in a better position to filter. But the thing is, some of us are not. So what happens here is that we choose. We choose what to listen to. We choose what to, to believe in. So digital marketers are aware of that. So this social media listening does not only put value on content, but also on context. So why 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 do they feel that way and that's that's exactly what what you should pursue the why is the bigger the bigger challenge so that you keep in touch with people so that you you are able to become relevant you stay relevant and you resonate and you know you echo you echo and you mirror what they're feeling at the moment so as a digital marketer that's something that everybody can actually utilize. It's a so, very new discipline, but you know, it's quite, it's quite, quite and I'm not saying it's easy to master, but the tools are there. And if yes. you want, you can learn this, this strategies easily. Actually, um, being in the discipline of integrated marketing communications, we know the value of research uh, because we have to we have to read through the data we've got to make uh, our insights uh, uh, our insights must be backed by data right and uh, the value of market research right now 
is be, is more intense because uh, with shifts in the the preferences and the values of our media uh, of our our audience rather we must change our messages we must uh, as communicators and as storytellers we should be able to tweak our stories and our um, uh, our content to match the needs and the desires and the the habits, new habits of our consumers, media consumers. So how do you think this will affect your new strategies for your brands, for the brands that you're handling? Everything now will be treated as before and after the pandemic. As in, you know, the context has changed. People are, people have changed. The impact is going to be for the long term. Our values have been questioned. Our moral compasses have been, what they have, you know, they have gone sideways. Uh, some some people's faiths have been shaken. But the thing is, the standards, the basic truths, are still are still there. So we have to keep in mind that you know, communication is what communication should resonate. Communication should be relevant. It should be it should talk to people, not. It, it, you know, not just not just uh, wh wh how do how will I, what's the best word to use? Not just feed their neurosis. What uh, what we need to do is to educate and uplift and engage and encourage. And the tools are there. And you notice that technology is even adjusting to to, to what human nature is, what our DNA is. Uh, there was a time when we thought that texting was enough but you know uh, technology adjusted and evolved and because people are visual now we know that video marketing is much more effective than just that we know that the series and the alexis of the world are going to multiply more because we need to hear a human voice so even if you ask me if how how different how different communication be, will be after the this pandemic. Well, the basic truths must still be upheld, but the way of communicating them will change because chatbots will be more, uh, well, relevant to us. The AR might just, you know, be better evolved and be better available to, to a greater majority. So, the, the basic tenets will still apply. It's just the technology that will change. I hope people will still go for the for the for the big things, for the for the truth. <laughs> for truth. Yes. Okay. Actually, but, you know, if you're going to use digital, you will always be able to what? Use a new app, okay, use the use new chat bots, use email uh email uh, no more effective technology the thing is communication should always resonate with your audience it should yes. be it should align it should align with their intent not just right. with your intent so great insight very that's a tremendous insight because i, I noticed also that after, once the pandemic set there were new um uh, messages given by a lot of uh, global news agencies and even institutions like the world health organization they're now very very vocal and very relevant no? and, and they're saying the same universal message about how to deal with the pandemic of this magnitude even governments have result, result resulted to uniform messages about how we can protect ourselves in fact that practically the entire free world has declared a war against the corona 19 virus the covid 19 virus so i'm going to call back um bill and um to give you his insights about this because the universality of messages across big established agencies as well as our own government and governments from all over the world we're now it's like a, an all-out war it's like world war three against covid 19. 
Um, and so I'd like to know what your take on it is, no? Uh, uh, how how uh, communicate how communications given this atmosphere of pandemic, what is the impact on everybody, all the communicators all over the world? Well, I think basically uh, we're all looking for something consistent. We're all looking for something credible. We're all looking for something solid. You know, for example, uh, there's uh, some information discrediting the World Health Organization. For example, there's a documentary posted online that they're actually being influenced by uh, Chinese money. So we are all looking for something that does not shake the very institutions that we believe in. And this is where it's becoming a free for all. Uh, we want to be able to be reassured that somebody is doing something to address the situation. We're all looking for uh, a way to feel that, you know, when we wake up tomorrow will be better, that we will get our food, we will get our, you know, social um, amelioration. We will be able to eventually go back to work, although it's not going to be as soon as people expect. So that's that's the struggle, the uncertainty, I think, is what's really affecting a lot of people. So a lot of us in our own little way are trying to, you know, reassure people, you know, we're writing the songs, uh, we're, we're you know, getting celebrities to tell people that everything's going to be okay, that we're all together, you know, stay home. Uh, you know, we're all trying to send all the same messages. Now, the problem arises when people start to compare. For example, uh, some countries, for example, like Sweden, they don't believe in, in, in locking down. Uh, some countries were slow in adopting a, a lockdown. There are some countries that are withholding information. So sometimes we want to compare a bucket of Filipinas and damning uh, sa Southeast Asia, tayo tayo pinakamarami. But you have to look at the situation specific to each country also and to each sit, uh, situation. For example, uh, in Quezon City, where, where I'm from, uh, you know, the local government is getting a lot of grief. But when you think about it, Quezon City is almost four times the size of Manila. So there it brings its own set of problems with it. And this is something that the general public does not realize or is not aware of. We need to teach people to think more deeply. Uh, you know, we go back, we, there, there's a lot of attempt to discredit the government, and there's a lot of bias in favor of the government also. So these are things that we have to, to teach people to go beyond, or go beyond the first impression, go beyond the, the knee-jerk reaction. What What is really behind the message? You know, for example, uh, if the president makes an announcement that he's going to speak to the nation at this time and then he's late, people complain. Now, people don't know what's going on behind the scenes. People, yes. people are saying, are, are assuming that he's lazy and making everybody wait. He's not doing it on purpose. There are so many things uh, that we are not aware of and that we just assume something is bad. So, you know, I, I, I hate to say it, but sometimes... Uh, we we become a nation of whiners, and we don't want to believe. You know, we want we want to believe the worst of people, and I think that is uh, an aspect of our belief system that we have to address. That yes, you know, people are working for our benefit. We have to believe in the basic goodness of people. That you know, everybody wants to help. Everybody wants the same outcome. Everybody wants everybody else to be okay. And, and you know, if we all are able to believe that, or the great majority of us believe that, then. You know, then we can move forward and, and really conquer this uh, this disease. Yes, um, and you know, um, you mentioned something really important that that people need a salve, some kind of a comforting uh, anything that will comfort them yes. during this time of fear and uh, uncertainty. And I'm gonna call on Boyat right now because I think he has. He has um, maybe like for a lot of artists out there, he has done his part in terms of trying to calm people down and assuage people's fears during this time of pandemic. So if you don't mind, I'm going to call on Boyat. Boyat, are, are you around? Yes, I am around. Okay. Uh, you know, yes. I'll, 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 I, will chime in, I will chime in with Bill. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah. I will chime in with Bill. Uh, just to extend uh, with Bill's point. I think the one thing that us Filipinos have to realize, uh, more so for our generation, Gracie, we've been able to see uh, 
nothing well we, we were able to experience events that made us stand up and take action we've been to events in our country's history that made us band as one and really take so to speak the bull by the horns and move forward and, and make everything better but since okay let me mention 1986 from 1986 till the present there have been no major upheavals uh politically for us uh well with the exception of edsa one two three and so on and so forth and the national calamities but for something like this which is really really big it it, it makes us think as to how did we prepare the children who are now parents the parents who had children that are now parents as well how did we train them did our education system really train them to become uh, prepared for something like this i highly doubt it uh, with the advent of technology everybody just enjoyed what technology put forth not being not being responsible about it and not being able to be accountable for what they put out there so what happens it's just everybody just it's as, as bill said it's the wild wild west so lahat na lang sige labas na lang broadcast lang ng broadcast without having that accountability to be to be responsible for what they put out there and that takes education it's educating our young people now who will be adults in 10 to 15 years and eventually will be the leaders of our country and maybe in our lifetime we will see a philippines that has a lot of very responsible calm and leaders who can calm our citizen and really take action at naghanda naman ako Yes, but we're but you're coming in loud and clear, and I I hear you loud and clear, and I think you raised a very good point because that's part of the credibility aspect of communicators and the sense of responsibility because they must be sensitive to the audiences and uh, making sure that they first of all get the truth, the manner of delivery must be. Uh, carefully handled because information especially during a time like this is very very crucial mm -hmm. and we yes. handle with care yes and, and also, the, yeah, go also ahead. to add to that uh whether you speak in english or in filipino kailangan parating malumanay kasi pag nagsilita ka na ng galit or nakikita ng tao na medyo nararatel ka na that, that says a lot Facial yes. expression pa lang, basa ka na ng tao kung anong, anong nangyayari sa isipan at sa damdamin mo. And that's very, very dangerous for people in positions of power. Uh, you, also, you always have to know how to be a calming presence, a very intelligent presence for your citizens because they will take the cue from you. Pag ikaw natataranta, eh ano pa kaya sila? Hindi pa. Yes, it's true that the manner of delivery is something that uh, as communicators should be mindful of. And mindfulness is very important at a time like this. When the whole world is in fear, in a state of fear, when people don't know, the, the, the horizon is so uncertain. So mindfulness in terms of communicating information is very important. Uh, and Boots, I'd like you to react to that because uh, coming from uh, your end as a marketing communicator, what do you think are the audiences looking for uh, later on when you create your new strategies for your accounts? What do you think will resonate with them? What are the new values? What are the important things that you have to take care of? Actually, based on what we hear on social media, everybody wants to be told the truth, the plain and simple truth. Everybody wants to be well treated like an intelligent part of human society. Don't treat us like mushrooms. Don't keep us in the dark and feed us shit. 
no way, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> as much as possible, tell me the truth and let me handle it like an adult. So, it, sadly, public information is seen as a recitation of rules and guidelines. Uh, I'm glad to tell you that a group of us uh, who are advertising practitioners have been invited to, you know, write write better communication strategies for, for government. They haven't come out yet, but as I always say, leave the communicating to the professionals, uh, people who know to, how to write and people who know how to digest this information into what edible bits and it's one thing to talk to the upper echelon of society versus talking to masa Ang masa kasi, uh, what matters to him may not necessarily matter to, to, to a two percenter no fact of life yon magkaiba ang two percenter sa sa masa so what we need to tell the people at the at the ground is Magkaiba ng needs yan eh. Magkaiba ng sensitivities. That is why there was this major bashing that happened on social media. If I remember, right, there was this woman who was doing this yoga pose in front of her 55-inch uh, LED, sit in LED. And, you know, it was totally out of touch. Netizens felt that it was insensitive because people, the daily wage, earners are not going to well <laughs> will find it insensitive and will find it hateful so what do they yeah. need here? they need to hear how government is going to do its job because government is supposed to deliver the basic services yes uh, rightly or wrongly we may have started the lockdown far too late or maybe in the opinion of others there was no framework that supported it, but they're playing catch up now. Right. Uh, um, that's important. Yeah. Level. So, what do we need to do? We need we need to inform people. We need to educate people. Maybe it's it's second nature for us to Google and to find out information. But this is something that is not available to the ordinary Joe. Uh, they have to yes. be told. They have to be informed. So, if you must take them by the hand and explain and you know without without losing your your sense of uh what sense of justice because that inequality is very obvious during during this time as in we're comfortable with the lockdown we have stockpiled our resources more or less we are working from home and we can expect some form of income to come in despite the lockdown but there are yes. people who are going to worry about what they're going to put on the table so public service and public information and if the government needs help well i'm not saying that you know that we're the best people to do it but there are people who can help who can step in we were asked by some private groups to come up with communication material so that people can understand the COVID virus better. We yeah. were we were invited to come up with with campaigns for social media that can make people accept help workers better in their own condo buildings and in their own you know neighborhoods. So that's it. If you yeah. ask people who are experts and who are veterans of communication, I think everybody will be willing to volunteer. I know, of course. That, you know yeah. a lot of us have, a lot of us have stepped up, but the thing is, you cannot talk down to people. What's oh, all no, we that? cannot. People will be able to find out how sincere you are, especially yes. on social media. It's an immediate reaction. People will be able to call out the fakes and see if you're if you're paying lip service and you're right. not walking the talk so now uh, I, yes and you brought up a very interesting idea that you cannot talk down to the audiences and no, uh, no. Back, i'd like to call back Boyet because you have a lot of experience in terms of um mass media broadcasting on the, on dzmm which is a very broad-based uh uh platform 
and you you communicate to practically all segments of the market given the different shows that you you've experienced so it's interesting when you what what is your recommendation now in terms of a a broad based approach talking to the masa talking to the greater part of the filipino nation when it comes to delivering important information during a crisis i'd like to call back boyet are you there okay. yeah uh just to uh, background there now when i started broadcasting i talk in english english hero eh. yes. when, when 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 i uh, had to uh, go and do filipino broadcasts it was a very very extensive learning curve for me but going to your question ang tao kasi pag tinagalog mo na yan ano may audience mo eh? you have to know your audience you know their sensibilities sensibility knowing the sensibilities is the magic word kailangan alam mo yung pulso alam mo yung kiliti ng tao pag ang tao tinrato mo na mas mababa sa iyo may problema ka na yes ngayon Iba yung gusto mong turuan, iba yung ang, ang rinig sa iyo eh minamanduan mo sila or inuutusan mo sila. Those are two yes. different things. Yes. So you have to be able to communicate with them like a brother, a father, or a very good friend. Yun ang istilo ng pakikipag-usap sa tao, lalong-lalo na sa radyo. Ngayon, sa pagbab, sa paghati uh, naman ng balita, sa paghati ng balita, in, in, in newscasting, kailangan ang, ang, ang pagbibigay mo ng balita, unang-una, dapat naniniwala sila sa sinasabi mo. Ang sinasabi mo ba ay katotohanan? Ang sinasabi mo ba ay magagamit nila? Pagkat kung sinasabi mo ay katotohanan nga, pero hindi naman nila magagamit, eh bakit pa kanilang pakikinan? If yes. the information is not useful for them, why will they tune in with you? They will tune out. They will say, yes. I don't need that information. That's useless for me. Right. So dapat ang binibigay mong informasyon para sa kanila ay unang-una, importante para sa kanila, interesado sila, at ang pag mo ng informasyon ay dapat uh, malumanay, Maganda ang tono. Klaro. Yun na pinaka-importante. Klaro. Yes. Uh, talagang naniniwala ako na yung delivery o yung paghahatid natin ng balita or information, malaking bagay yan eh. Kasi unang-una, kailangan mag-appeal tayo sa mga puso na nakikinig sa atin. Lalo na sa ganitong panahon ng krisis. Eh, pag ang tono mo is uh, yung hindi malumanay, hindi friendly, hindi hindi parang bosses ng mapagkakatiwala ang tao, talagang hindi makikinig or they will not believe you or they might feel offended. Yun ang ayaw natin mangyari, di ba? Tama yan. At uh, in, 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 a of, in a lot of cases, uh, and and i don't want to sound like i'm better than everybody else because i'm not yes. uh, what i've noticed with uh the delivery the vocal the, the auditory delivery of news sometimes okay. is that there is just uh, a hint of of sensationalism in the tone of the voice instead of just being calm and delivering it well and clearly bakit ko sinabi yan? Dahil unang-una, pag masyadong binibigay ng emphasis yung tono ng boses, eh minsan, eh, wala na yung, wala na yung, yung importansya ng kwento, kumbaga. Hindi, na mo, hindi mo na alam yung emosyon ng kwento. Dahil, ganun at ganun parati yung tono, eh. Pag, pag hindi mo na nagagawan ng, ng, ng auditory uh, importance, ika nga, sa nakikinig o sa nanunood. Uh, halimbawa, kung ang isang story ng entertainment ay pareho ng tono sa isang story ng taong pinatay, edi eh pareho na lang yun. May pinatay, may, may, may kinasal na artista, pareho na lang sila. So, yes. th- there, are, there, are certain, there are certain elements in news delivery, in, in, in audit, auditory delivery, that has to be also... Uh, taken into consideration, we're in 
you have to give emphasis on where the important news are. And, and talking about news, 25, 30 years ago, ang news news, ang newscast, newscast. Yes. <laughs> ang newscast, newscast. Yes. Minsan kasi hindi na eh. Diba? Minsan it's it's become na newscast. entertainment news. <laughs> Kaya nga eh. So, yun na, rin, yun na rin ang nagiging problema natin. Hindi po sa yes. ako ay nagugusta or ako ay nang 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 hindi na natin, kumbaga, nawawala na kung minsan yung importansa ng isang programang balita. Uh, dahil nga, uh, masyado ng maraming elemento na nawawala na yung kakalagahan. The importance of the newscast has already been watered down, yes. uh, so to speak. So, our audience, ang, ang ating mga manonood ko minsan, ay hindi na binibigyan ng tunay na pagpapahalaga yung mga istorya o yung mga balitang dapat talaga nilang isinasa ulo at isinasa puso. Dahil and, wala na eh. Ganun na lang eh. True. And in fact, sometimes like during the primetime news for instance, I noticed that some of the channels, no, may mga ibang primetime news, local stories, they air on national news. And sometimes it's no longer relevant to the rest of us, no? Uh, mm. And and I don't know if it's for lack of content or for uh, or that's the orientation that they want to give that they want to make everything localized because that could be a strategy. Mm. But uh, I feel that uh, out of the one, well, let's say one hour prime time, you will only find maybe the first fifteen minutes or the, or maybe. 30 or 40 percent of national importance the rest are very localized or not relevant like they'll, they'll talk about a, a burglary in some town in some place that it's not of you know it's it's for the local consumption maybe or not even of national importance what, what is your reaction to that kind of reportage you know sometimes uh News divisions uh, include this as a way to uh, to put uh, focus on what's happening in the regions, which uh, actually is a good thing. But if, if what's happening in the regions is the same thing that you'll be doing all over again, every day in, day out, uh, without also putting in what, as they say, bad news is always good news. Get my get my get my drift. Yes, yes. I, I, I know that. Just that. For so for anything that's for anything that's negative happening in and around the country, that is eyes and ears on the television set or on the device because they want to see. Ano nangyari? Sino na matay? Sino pumatay? Sino na kawan? Sino nagnakaw? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That is already been. That that is how the citizen has been trained to appreciate or to consume the news. Uh, that's why I'm, I've, I've always said, let's educate, let's educate. That that is not the be all and end all of what a newscast is. There are bigger things, greater things that our citizens, citizenry should be taught and should be knowledgeable about. Siguro natakot, yeah. natatakot na siguro tayong magturo. Dahil uh, pag tinuturuan mo nga, sabi nila, when you start teaching uh, people, they think it's being condescending. I think it's not. Uh, teaching is a way for them to get to be more discerning, to, to know better. And if the people that are teaching, that are uh, uh, imparting the information are people that are credible, then our people will believe them. But if yes. the people that are conveying the information are people that the citizen, the citizen we have doubts about, then you have a problem. Yes, and uh, I think uh, Boots has some response to an to uh, uh, an issue that you brought up. I'd like to call back Boots Season. I you have a reaction to what Boyet just said? Yeah. Yeah, because you know the news doesn't sound like the news anymore. 
Okay, so maybe that's where social media came in to fill up this vacuum because people were were looking for news. But it's so sad because if you de depend on Facebook for 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 your news, it's like depending on Disney for for literature, right? <laughs> it's so wrong. There are so many things wrong with that. So what what happens now is well, there is there is a need for for news to be relevant, news for be what to be exactly uh, informative to tell us to tell us the things that we need to hear or to tell us what we cannot have. So yes. that's it. The news has to sound like the news. I know what you're talking about, Boyet, because we all were able to work with the networks, and maybe it's it's the dumbing down. They have they have right. turned it into. A piece of entertainment i don't know if it's because it has to resonate with the masses they keep saying that it has to be understood by the masses but what happened was there was literally a dumbing down of society even in education public information so yeah i can understand why so then in comes social media where everybody's an author or everybody can put anything and there is no accountability and no no censorship so what you see on social media is sadly some people see it as news even if it ha happens to be fake so yeah boy so since you're in the biz i think <laughs> it's on your shoulders to uplift the industry okay make sure okay, that you know we have, a, we have another reaction right now boots we have another reaction uh bill velasco has something to say about this topic yeah um uh, yeah, 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 yeah. this is a very relevant discussion no? first of all uh, if you go back because uh, i've been in the in the news industry since 1986. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. carbon dating carbon younger, dating okay. younger than boy yet yeah <laughs> <laughs> growth spurt pero, uh, <laughs> Uh, but when you go back, uh, news was never designed to make money. Originally, yeah, entertainment uh, programs earned the money and they threw it into news. Yes, but that's true. that all changed uh, with TV Patrol back in the late 1980s. I was there. Uh, it was that, mm -hmm. that time when you know they said, you know, we have to find a way for news to make money. And for news to make money, it has to appeal to the broadest, basest audience, meaning entertainment police reporting uh drive-by mm. shootings petty crimes and all of that so that's yeah. where that attitude comes from now on a more sinister or diabolical note <laughs> there are some newscasts now there are some newscasts that lead with petty crimes as their headline as their top story yes they yes. want to make people feel unsafe they yes. want to make people feel something's wrong with the country and therefore by extension something's wrong with the government so that's another thing uh and then also because everything tama has yan, tama yan. so since everything has to make money for them uh of course they can only use their own artistas their own actors actresses and singers in their own entertainment news so they rarely cover events and uh, creations of other networks because that will make money and draw attention to the other networks so that's the major shift that happened uh, a little over 30 years ago the news now has to make money and therefore it has to rate so it can charge advertisers more so that's wow. that's i think no, no wait and that's also, also why okay no, that's also why bill velasco and boyat season are not on air they're <laughs> <laughs> not entertaining enough. And on that note, I well, think we're going to have an accident for you. Okay. It should sound massive. Out there and, you know, the discussion is heating up. We're going to go on a quick break right now. And uh, okay. I think that uh, we're going to invite everybody back uh, in a few minutes. Let's go for a quick break. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. We'll be right back. We'll be back shortly with Tita Gracie. Let's chat with Tita Gracie only here on V81 Radio. Easter is meant to be a symbol of hope, renewal, and new life. Remember, God 
Lord loves each of us as if there were only one of us. He is risen. Happy Easter from V81 Radio. Nagahatid saya sa mga Pinoy, mga kantang tatak Pinoy. Kahit nasan ka man, kami ay mapapain. The future of radio in Manila, California, and Hong Kong. This is V81 Radio. Ayo ka man sa iyong pamilya, dito ay hindi ka nag-iisa. Kiyak ito'y iyong hahanap-hanapin Dahil ito ang nagpapasaya sa atin Radio Ang paborito ng bawat Pilipino Basta all hits o oh, Pinoy Panalo Merong kwentong iyakan at tawanan Kahit nasaan ka man ito'y Radio. 